Hi everybody, in the absence of my husband, as he's in hospital, as you all know, I will be running a, a few podcasts in his absence. Um, and first on tonight is the wonderful Simon Ambler from Wakefield. Hi, Hi. Emma, love. How are you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you, love? Great. Well, how's, how's, how's Brian? He's, he's, get, he's, he's in the best place, so he's yeah. getting after, but he's been... I'm, for I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. So, he'll get there because he's got the strength, in, being the strength to do it, and he's yeah. got you as an angel, so I think he'll be all right. Bless you. Yeah, so his uh, sister Kathleen's been helping me a lot, so it's been great. So, Brilliant. Yeah. brilliant. As long as you've got that support, that's yeah. that's all you need, isn't it? That's yeah. that support, and, and that's brilliant. So, Simon, you, you were telling me earlier your dad's got a book. Yeah, um, he, he was a, a staunch NUM man. Uh, he, he was a miner, worked in miners as a miner all his life. Right. And he brought a book out uh, about the miner strike, which was called A Coalfield in Chaos. Mm -hmm. And it details his year, um, getting uh, arrested by the police, nicking coal, um, you know, everything that he had to do, and then eventually getting blacklisted from the, the government. Yeah. That's the government. He was one of a handful of people in the miners yeah. um, that got blacklisted because he was a big NUM man who, who tried to keep everybody up. Yeah. He saw it through to the end. Does I remember all that going on when I was younger? Was it, uh, was, was it Arthur Scargill and, and things? Arthur Scargill, yeah. He, he was the N NUM man. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a bit. I don't know how to take Arthur Scargill. My, my dad really liked him and idolised him, but. Um, I've heard a lot of things since about Arthur Scargill, what he didn't have the miners' interests at heart. So, you know, I'm 50-50 I'm on it. Yeah. I remember him being, I was only young, I can remember him being really outspoken and really loud on the TV, wasn't he? But it I was see. terrible what they all went through, wasn't it? With the... Yeah, I think Arthur got arrested, actually. It was in my dad's book. He got arrested one day. Mm -hmm. I think the only time he got arrested were the cameras were were present so you know the cameras could see him getting arrested yeah. the rest of the time he was just you know behind the men yeah supporting them, as we were saying supporting them yeah yeah so i bet it was a really hard time for him your dad at that point wasn't it it was hard time for him yeah it's de detailed in his book and um, i did read it and um, my dad passed away in 2009 right um, before he passed away i asked him if i could bring it up today and um published a book on amazon which we did it's available now yeah. and every penny goes to the nspcc child line which is fantastic oh, i mean the reason why i do that is my childhood was one of the worst you can imagine and you know what i'm talking about um i, I got pushed around from children's homes to barstool detention center eventually prison and it was a nightmare it truly was a nightmare the only saving grace was me and my partner, my current partner, Linda, and I've been with her since I was 18. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's a saving grace for me. Yeah. Oh, that's horrendous, isn't it? So the book's yeah. called what, what, Simon? A Coal Field in Chaos, and okay. it's available on Amazon, and every penny goes to um, Childline. Uh, put... And it's PCC, which I will send you proof. I think I've sent you proof. So if uh, AJ can put that up, that'd be fantastic. And I'll put links underneath this for, to, for the links for your dad's book. And that's Thank lovely. You. Because of your bad childhood, you've, you've chose that charity. Yeah. Yes, child line. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic char charity. And look how around Simon and meeting your wife. And, and you've got a son, haven't you, who's a good rugby player? He's 16 now, avid rugby player, plays for Normington Knights, and he's uh, he goes to the gym every, every single day, he doesn't miss. Aww. The only time he's missed is during the uh, pandemic, yeah. um, which the gym had to close, unfortunately, but he was doing a lot of exercise at home, running, yeah. uh, push-ups and things like that, but you can't really do everything at home unless you've got like a multi-gym. Yeah. So when the gym opened back up, um, he was back on it, and he's, he's now getting massive. I mean, I come down the other day, and he sort of like yawned, and, and his definition now is fantastic. It's really good. So I'm really proud of him. I'm proud of all my kids. I've got three. Yeah. Uh, one, my daughter, she's a nurse, uh, for custody nurse for West Yorkshire Police. See? Oh, that's yeah. amazing. My other son, he's, uh, uh, he's got his own business, and um, this lad here, he wants to go to the RAF. So fantastic. Yeah, it's good, because all the kids nowadays are just... 
it's terrible the way it's all going, isn't it now? Oh, it is. Yeah, I mean, oh, it, you know, most of the kids these days, all they're bothered about is drugs and knives. Yes. Being in the gang, counter lines and stuff like that, it's, it's terrible. Yeah, I was just talking about that with um, Kathleen the other day, county lines. I didn't know nothing about it. It's serious as well, serious. Oh, serious. Yeah, they're coming from London to West Yorkshire, Middlesbrough. They are coming to Middlesbrough. They're going everywhere. Every police force has reported the county lines in the last 12 months. What is it exactly, Simon? What did, what did the... County lines, it's drug dealers. What they do is they send um, young children... Mm -hmm up into um, villages and towns in the north and things like that to sell the drugs. And then when they sold it, they bring the money down. And you see, being a young child, they're not likely to be pulled up by the police so they get away with it. And it's awful. It's, it's destroying communities. It's killing people. A friend of mine, his son died because of it. Um, and, you know, I think it's disgusting. I think it's terrible and something should be done. Are they meeting the, the people online then and stuff like that? Is how um, they... I don't know how they do it. I think it's just like when you've got an, um, an addict in a certain town, yeah. they all know somebody who can get the drugs and then the word gets around quickly. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's how it is. They, they quickly find them. Yeah. So it's then... awful. Like, I've got a friend of mine who was, who was a heroin addict and he's a lovely lad, really lovely lad. Yeah. And I'd love to get him out, but you know what I mean? It's hard. It's really hard because I've got to help myself as well. Yeah. They've got to want to push it. Yeah, they do. Get by it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. But yeah. um, we met, we met um, a few months ago now. It was about, how long ago, Simon, was it? Oh, I can't remember. Was it last year now? Yeah, it was a bit yeah. Yeah, it's, it's gone by so quickly. Yeah, we, we met um, quite a while back. I'd known Brian, uh, not personally, but I'd seen him on TV on the um, uh, McIntyre uh, video, which I like the video, I like McIntyre, but the thing is, I mean, I, I speak the truth and I will speak the truth throughout this video. Yeah. Brian didn't come off really, really well on, on, on that video. You know what I mean? It, it didn't come across very well, but the Brian that he is now... Yeah. He's a, he's a totally changed man. He's a lovely man. He's got you as his angel, as a backup. And honestly, he's fantastic. Totally changed character. And, and I'll do anything. And I'll tell you something um, about yourselves. When I first met you, we'd hardly met. And I asked, I asked you for a book, yeah. uh, a signed book, so I could give it to my son's rugby team yeah. as, a, as a raffle present. Yeah. And without hesitation, you sent it to me free of charge. Didn't charge me postage and you signed, you both signed it. And I'll always be thankful for that. And that's lovely, that. You Thank good you. people. And I think you helped, you helped us as well at the time because you getting in touch, uh, I mean, we we knew at the time we were... we were you had a bit of bother, didn't you, with um, a certain author and other people who were backing him up, sending you violate messages and things like that. Going in the house. Now, what happened, I met this, this person yeah. um, through a publisher who I gave my dad's book to, to yeah. publish. Yeah. And I said to this 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 publisher, yeah. any money, please give it to this charity, what the author was supporting at the time. I don't think, personally, any money was ever sent because I asked him for proof and he didn't give me it. Yeah. So I got my, my father's book back. But through association with this publisher, I met this certain author and he was doing a couple of books about some notorious characters around Wakefield. And I dealt with him being in Wakefield, being in the shop. Nobody else would want to deal with him when he came in. I, I just didn't give a damn because that's a, the person I was back then. Yeah. And I dealt with him and I found him all right. I really did. You know what I mean? And I, I met this certain uh, wild character, Wakefield, yeah. a couple of times after that. And I sat down talking to him and he told me all sorts of tales, you know, yeah. about donking and, you know, never to trust him and, Things like that. So that's how I met this author. Mm. Now, through that, eventually, we were talking on Facebook and um, this author got me to um, ring yourselves, if you can remember. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it was a bit of a joke because I just put a funny Indian voice on and I thought it was just a joke. But later on, um, this person, this author, yeah. admitted to me on Facebook and I've got proof and I, I give you permission to use it yeah. and he asked me uh, it, sorry he told me that he got somebody to ring you up and threaten to burn your house down Yeah. and after that I just said you are and I just blanked him and I didn't you know speak to him after that 
yeah. a few a few days later or a week later maybe a couple of weeks later mm -hmm. he sent me a few messages now one of them was um some african gay gay porn yeah. and i just found it disgusting that you know i'm not into anything like that yeah. and i found it disgusting and, and again i will give you proof and, and you can put it up i'll give you permission I'm to going to the screenshots that simon's kindly give us um yeah. sure direct messages from from the certain person to mm. Simon um admitting to burn our houses down um Dale Bed and Hyde was another wasn't he Dale yeah um this author just has, had a really bad bee in his bonnet about Dale and he told me that Dale walked about with um knuckle dusters and you know all sorts of tales yeah now, this, part, this author came to meet me and wait for them. Again, I only speak the truth. I don't embellish anything. Everything I say will be 100% the truth. Yeah. He came to Wakefield and he seemed nervous. He was panicking. He, he, he looked scared of Dale Brendan Hyde. And he kept saying, oh, you know, this Dale Brendan Hyde, you know, we, we, we've had a Barney and I'm a bit worried. I said, look, you and me don't worry about it. So um, I know... Dale, I didn't know him personally then, but um, through this author, um, you know, this author really had a, a thing about him. He hated Dale, and he was sending me messages trying to get me to. Um, I think he said at the time, crucify him, you know, sending messages, phone him up, and things like that. And I just didn't want to do it. Yeah. You know, I'm not into that thing. I'm old school. I don't threaten women. I don't threaten children, yeah. and I don't threaten yeah. people with cancer patients. You know what I mean? Yeah, was suffering with cancer at the time, wasn't he? He was at the time, yeah, bless him. And he, I think he's on the road to recovery now, which is yeah, fantastic. Is and after I met you and we got talking and then I got talking to Dale and I told him what had happened. Yeah. Like I said, again, I, I talk the truth, whether it's, you know, going to create a problem for me or not, I tell the truth. Yeah. And eventually I got Dale to come and I, I got a couple of books off him, for, for, again, for the rugby team. And I met him in person. He was a lovely, lovely bloke, really nice bloke. And I spoke to him. He's really nice. the two people that and the people that he tried to turn turn you against, sort of thing. We've all mm. become friends now, which is amazing. But I can is, yeah, yeah, we've got stronger through it. I can remember at that time when we were getting phone calls. I was picking mm. the phone up, and people were saying, "I'm going to burn your house down. I'm going to come and rape you." And I yeah. remember saying, "Yeah." Yeah. And I got proof of that on Facebook messages. I mean, the thing is, I've even got, um, I've even been attacked today by two people, the, the certain author and, and his wife, yeah. um, saying that I've been loading into this account, fake account called Dan something or other, yeah. sending them um, hatred messages online. But the thing is, they don't, what they don't realise is this. Every message through Facebook is saved for up to six years, and they keep the IP addresses, the email addresses, the account details, everything. Yeah. The yeah. internet protocol addresses, the IP addresses, lead to whoever sent them to, yeah. the, to, their, to their address, to their street, to their address. Yeah. Same with my internet provider. I specifically ask them to record everything that happens, you know, obviously, because my son was doing multiplayer gaming, and yeah. I wanted to make sure that he was safe. Yeah. And I specifically request them that they record every site, everything that, that we go on. Yeah. So I've got all that backed up for years. So if you please come, I'd welcome it, I'd show them it, and then I will get uh, the people yeah. done for perverting the course of justice and wasting police time. Yeah, by, by the police, did you say? I've been threatened by the police today, by these people, saying that um, I've been sending messages to his wife. Look, I, and uh, you know me, I'm old school. Um, I don't threaten women, I don't threaten children. It's something that you don't do. Well, when uh, you got in touch with us, I mean, I was picking mm. the phone up when they were saying, you're going to burn the house down and things. It mm. was an absolute nightmare. I was, like, so scared that my anxiety was terrible. Yeah. Um, different things like that. But um, what was I going to say to you there? <laughs> um, sorry, my mind's just gone blank. I've just talked about it. I think it's something. It'll come back to you. Yeah. So when I was picking, we were getting these messages. Yeah. Getting the messages. It was absolutely horrendous. And um, I was picking the phone up and saying, "We're going to burn the house down. We're going to do this. Going to do that." And it was just so so awful. And mm. so I, it was, yeah. Ryan was like, uh, "Didn't know what to do because we we knew where it was coming from." Yeah. But we're getting called. You had a good idea where it was coming from, and and I got proof that it was actually that person. So. Oh. Called lies and stuff, and when mm. you came forward with them 
actual text messages that mm. was sent from that account and mm. with a unique message ID number showing you it was that person. Yeah. I, I was so relieved. It was like we knew it was him all along. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah. Just I got I got proof uh, from this certain person's account that he was sending it um and that he you know got somebody to say that they were going to burn the house down that, that to me that's a serious event yeah now, we all reported it to the police you asked me to report it to, to the police now again i'm old school and i don't like reporting to the police yeah but thing is these days we're doing it the legal way we're doing it the right way you know what i mean and and the but police came out to me. I made a statement to the police, and I even video called it to you at the time. Can you remember? Yeah. And I showed you that the police officer were there, and he got the pad out, and he was recording everything. They tried saying that I hadn't made the report, and they tried saying other people, like Terry, hadn't, hadn't made the report as well. But one thing, one really strange thing, Emma, the police officer told me that he was from Wales. Now, I reported this to West Yorkshire Police. Yeah. Why the hell should a, a police officer come from Wales? Yeah. It's really weird. That is really weird. And also trying to say that they haven't got the report. Mm -hmm. So that to me is very suspicious. I'm not going to say what I think it is, but it's very suspicious. You know what I mean? That they're doing that and they're not taking it seriously, yeah. which they should have done because it's, it's terrible what you were going through. Uh, see, and Brian. The thing was, um, we didn't actually... Um, phone the police at first um yeah. i reported yeah. the phone call and i said yeah. we report it this was on the 31st of october early hours of 1st of november yeah. but i reported the phone call to the police that put a fireproof letter box in um yeah. the fire brigade and things and i said i just wanted it locked down um because obviously we knew who it was but we couldn't prove um mm. the next thing uh brian and i were in here and the police came looking for terry dixon because yeah. uh, he was on a podcast with Brian. So he, the police came here uh, to arrest Terry and said that he was under investigation for um, harassment and different things. So when he was here, Carol Edwards, Lee Duffy's missus, was on the phone and mm. she, she was on loudspeaker and she said, are you joking, harassment? She said, we've all been getting tortured for years. Yeah. And that's when the policeman said, let's have a look. And that's when I put a statement into the police Carol put a statement into the police. Terry put mm. a statement into the police. Marty put a statement into the police. I um, did. Because it was, they were, they were trying to insinuate that we were online bullying and harassing people. I mean, yeah. we're totally, totally against all that. I mean, can't stand police, can't stand well, people. The thing, the thing is, you, you asked me to uh, do a bit of work for you, and I saw your, your Facebook messages, and I can say on here that you didn't send anything. You are, Brian. You didn't send any messages whatsoever. No. So them saying that it's it's wrong and it's it's a it's a lie. Yeah, but it's just it was like a, when when it all came out and then when you came forward with yours mm. and you yeah. even put a statement in, it was like the statements were lost this that and the other. So yeah. obviously police didn't do anything with that. But, really weird, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's very strange. But it's just it's you give us like some kind of closure on it because we knew it we weren't going mad and and we. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so but what was it that um you were asked to do when Brian answered the phone? I've got it on record, so if AJ can put it up on screenshot um while while we're talking, um basically yeah, he, he did a couple of things. He asked me to phone Brian up and ask him for a fight. That's yeah. recorded. Again, I'm only speaking the truth, I'm not embellishing it, everything's recorded. Yeah. He asked me to ring Brian up for a fight, and then he asked me to ring um, somebody else up and do a funny voice, which I did. Yeah. And they took it a bit um, all right in the end. I think they realised it were a laugh. It and like, then he asked me to ring yourself. He came to the person asking you, it was like, come on, fishy wishy, let's go cast your rod. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, isn't it? That's like, cast yeah. your rod, let's go fishing. See what yeah. it's like, quite sick. But the mad thing yeah. is, the person who was asking you to do it, we're talking about, I'd actually sent you a screenshot of Brian's telephone number out yeah. of contacts. And his address. And Brian's address also, but it had all the person we're speaking about contacts above mm -hmm. Brian's number and below. So yeah. Yeah. it's crazy. So there's no denying who it is. 
And as you say, it, it, it was a screenshot of his phone and also on my Facebook messages. You see what they don't realize I've, I've said Facebook keep messages for up to six years. Yeah. And they also keep the IP addresses, the email addresses, what they use. So it doesn't matter what they do, even if they use a, a VPN, virtual private network, doesn't matter because the IP is still available. Police know how to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, and they will be found out. So um, the internet providers, they keep a report, so they'll yeah. be able to find out. And each each Facebook message has a unique Facebook messenger number, which you've... It, does. it which does, you're right. Every message has a unique number, which can be traced back to the uh, account holder, the, who's got the email address, the IP address, and everything, so it doesn't matter where it comes from, it can be traced back. Use. Um, you've you've got the unique message ID number who that account belongs to. I did. It's also got on it uh, where they'd, they'd admit it's threatening to burn people's houses down, getting people to yeah. ring. And then I could see how shocked you were by your reply to that and said, what have you, what have you got them to say? And yeah. then said it, you said, what by phone? And I could mm. see that's when you cut him off then because obviously you read that serious stuff he was talking about. Yeah, I didn't speak to him again after that because, uh, to me, that's serious. That's going down a really serious route, and you don't do it. Um, now, I thought the police would take that really seriously because yeah. if anybody else had done it, they'd be arrested. Also, now, I don't know whether the police are punishing Brian for his past or whether there's something else a bit suspicious, if you know what I mean, yeah. what we can't say, but... Um, yeah. You know, there's something not right there because um, it wasn't it wasn't taken seriously. It was handed to a police officer who was finishing in a, a few months. Yeah. And he was a, a PCSOF, I do believe, or something like that. Right. So yeah. it wasn't taken seriously when it should have been CID. Yeah. And I mean, I'd, I'd been in a house five years ago and I was in uh, intensive care. Um, yeah. I'd, just with the carbon monoxide. So... Yeah. When, that's what I mean, I was absolutely petrified when you've been You're there. bound to be loved. I mean, I once tried rescuing somebody mm. from a house where we used to live in Featherston, and the house was totally in flames. And I, I got one of the neighbours to get a, a quilt, and I said, look, wet it and bring it around straight away. He did. Put it around me. I opened the door, and I've never seen anything like it. It was just a wall of flames. Yeah. And the, the smoke and everything. There was no way I could go up. And the sad thing is that the lady passed away. Um, because of the smoke, but a baby was miraculously saved by the owner of the house who jumped out of a window and nearly broke her back. That's amazing, isn't it? Mm. But it's, it's a scary thing. I mean, I can remember when we were getting them calls. Yeah. Be, um, on edge a lot because if I heard a car pull up or on a night, it brings it back. It brings it back to you, doesn't it? Awful, yeah. Mm. So, but it was just, I was just so thankful that you came forward to them and it gave me that the peace knowing of where it was instigated from, where it comes yeah. from. Yeah. But, um, and I can't thank you enough, Simon, for uh, letting us use these. These uh, screens no problem. Up on this video, um, people can make their own minds up. It's it's Simon's let me use their screenshots, and it's yeah. on a certain person's account. So I don't I don't lie. I, I I the thing is, once a person lies, you can't trust them ever again. Yeah. I, I tell the truth, I don't embellish it, I just tell it how it is and what happened. And just, a certain person will know that I'm I'm telling the truth. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's all we want to do. We're not bullying anyone, we just want to put nope. them out. At the moment, nope. we're getting accused of bullying people. Uh, poor Brian's being accused of bullying people. Um, they even said to Brian they were calling him a spacker. Now, that man's in hospital and he's very poor, and that's disgusting. Yeah. And, and and I'm also going to put the screenshot up of, you've just reminded me there, um, Brian was in a wheelchair after the first operation and we took him took him out to Redcar. And, and they put at, the, the publishing company is that professional, they put yeah. at Little Britain because yeah. Brian was in a wheelchair. Under their own account instead of making a fake account. At Little Britain, do you know what I mean? And Brian, yeah. Brian's obviously in a wheelchair. It's been a terrible time for him. Um, so being used to being so strong and trained every day like he was, I mean, yeah, yeah. Was something as sick as that. I mean, what? Where's the bullies here? It's 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 crazy. Yeah. But you're I, not the bully. I can tell you now because you've done nothing. All you've done is defend yourself and tell the truth. You've tried to do it the legal way, and they've just not wanted to do anything. The police and it's a very serious crime what they're doing. Well, but now he's yeah, in a hospital bed now. I, yeah. he has 
clue about all this stuff that's going on. Mm. Um, obviously, this this uh, all this stuff that's been on the internet the last few days about truths and facts coming yeah. out of these people. Um, this all started coming out when Brian was in hospital, so he has mm. a clue about what's going on at all. And yeah, he doesn't need it at the minute. He does not need it. He's very poor. He's very ill, and the man doesn't need this. Like bullying anyone, he can't even hold a telephone at the moment. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Seen, uh, ongoing tirade of harassment and abuse to people. And the thing is, as well, you haven't got time to do anything because you're running back and forward to the hospital. You're getting everything done for yourself. You're not. You know what I mean? You need to be looking after yourself as well, but look after Brian. Yeah. Uh, and I know just earlier on when we spoke, you said you were yeah. uh, tired, quite tired. So it's it's hard on you as well, isn't it? It's really draining, but um, it's been because yeah. obviously it's been nearly ten weeks that uh, since he had his last stop, and now now this. So it has been worrying. Been a lot of like sat in hospitals a lot, um, worrying about Brian. Obviously because he's he couldn't do much when he got out, um, but. Yeah. That he's where he is now, and he's not having to go through more of this torture that is going. Yeah, on. yeah. Um, as you say, with after you refuse to do them things, so you start getting the obscene uh, videos. I start, I start getting videos of African yeah. males, uh, several African males having sex, and you know what I mean. I just after that, I just blocked him. I didn't, I didn't want to know anything because yeah. it's you just know, it's isn't it? sick. But it, it, they're making it out to be as if uh, Brian is the bully in all of this. Yeah. I control yeah. what goes on to the internet because it's me here. Brian isn't capable of using the phone. That's the last time. Mm. Uh, also, all Brian ever stated is, is, a, is facts. He, he just wanted invoices. That's all he asked for. Yeah. He hasn't um, wished anybody any harm. He hasn't threatened anybody. The people who we're talking mm. about have been blocked off his yeah. phone since, yeah. since the call out. Um, he's still getting accused of bullying people, which is total madness. Mm. Um, and I just don't know when it's going to end. But the thing is, they seem to be putting it all on Brian when they're forgetting there's how many other people. I mean, you know, with the things I sent to you, there's about 20 people got in touch with us mm. with, with proof. This is what I'm going to say to you. Person. If, if one person, if it's just one person who says, oh, he's, he's ripped me off and everything. You could think, oh, they're telling a lie. But when seven, eight or nine people all say the same thing, that's different. Yeah. And it's also the the, the online trolling that the people came forward for. I mean, yeah. the people that we never even met came forward and sent us messages. Yeah. Uh, like numerous people. Uh, there was like a boxing trainer from, uh, I think, South Bank of Grangetown. Mm. Uh, there was a lovely band from London, a boxer called Ben Doherty, who got in touch with us, who would who'd suffered the same thing. Um, you got um, Big Joan as well, didn't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Carol Edwards. Oh, fantastic. Carol Edwards. You know, you've got some really good people on, and I you've did. got that support there, and that's all you need, love, is just that support at the minute. Yeah, and <laughs> we all sent us the screenshots of all what had been going on. Um, yeah. And that was from the person's own phone number, and you can blatantly see. Uh, the yeah. same happened to Dale when he tried to um he tried to ignore it he carried on getting abuse and then mm. a certain person recorded him when he eventually snapped because he was suffering with cancer and getting yeah. help by these phone calls messages uh, and yeah. saying I hope you die and this and other really terrible stuff which will maybe he's put up with Dale but it's like uh he snapped one day because he was threatening to do things to his dad to his dog mm. and I'll do this I'll I'll do things on your grave when you die, Dale, and you're stressed enough. So one day he just snapped back, and then yeah. the person went into the police station with a tape recording. You're joking. Dale snapping back, and the police actually uh, went to arrest Dale. So, I mean, Never. I think this is what they've been wanting with the Brian situation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Snaps, and they, can, and, and they can do that, but it's just mm. crazy. That's what they've tried to do today with me. They sent me messages to certain two people. Yeah. And they sent me messages. And in the messages, it was designed to get a reaction. And yeah. I didn't want to give them that sat satisfaction. I've just blocked them because, well, number one, I don't I don't attack women and children. I don't no. send messages online. If I send any messages, I send it with my, my named account. You know what I mean? I don't hide anything. 
Oh. If, I, if I've got a problem with anybody, I tell them to the face. You yeah. know what I mean? So all this about sending messages, it's just wrong. I can prove it and I will get them done for perverting the course of justice yeah. and wasting police time. Well, that, that's amazing because they, they obviously mentioned also names, which I'm not going to mention, uh, mm. as I infect you in one of the messages today. They've yeah. also mentioned sending the police to you. So yeah. at the end of the day, I hope they do send the police to you, Simon, because you are oh, definitely not that person and you haven't done that. But this is this is what you... And I can, I can prove it. Yeah. So it's just all crazy. But I've just felt I had to bring you on today and I'm so pleased you've come on because this is all going on. Why, as I say, Brian's in hospital and he's... He knows nothing about all this madness that's been getting posted. Yeah. And like he's in there getting accused of bullying people. He's, he's he hasn't. And then all this like online hatred, trying to yeah. stir up uh, hatred towards Brian. How they're going to bring Brian down and stuff. It's and awful, awful, absolutely awful. It really is. So I've just felt like it's hard enough for Brian being in hospital. I'm here on my own. Um, yeah. There's even false accounts coming out on YouTube saying, oh, I can't wait till so and so, so and so comes to your house and does you in, he's going to expose you. So I've been oh. on edge because I'm here on my own, do you know what I mean? With, with... Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. If anybody comes, just phone the police. Just... Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not worrying yeah. at all, but I mean, no. uh, what I'm going to do is, um, it's just, I've been blanking them all, but I just felt today I've had to like maybe speak out a little bit. It's, yeah. Yeah, I just don't know why people can't see the games that are getting played by these people. All we're doing is speaking the truth. We're not embellishing it. We're not making any lies. We're just telling the truth. I don't, I don't say anything that he hasn't done. I'm just, and I've got proof for everything I say. I've got proof for my for my IPs. I've got proof from messages going back years from my Facebook. I'm going to really give them to the police. Yeah. And like I said, you know, I'm I'm the one, I'm not the one. Uh, for them to attack because I will be able to prove them wrong. And uh, one of the people um, has a prominent job in a certain place, which um, if they found out what they were doing, they would get the sack. And you know what I mean? Yeah, mm. uh, absolutely awful. But I'm just so pleased you've come forward today, Simon, and 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 spoke because no problem. Like Brian, but get Brian's getting targeted when. Yeah. He's certainly not a bully. We don't condone bullying. We're totally against bullying. And um, when people are accusing you of being uh, in, in their trolls and on about bringing your husband down who's in hospital, who knows nothing about it, um, I felt like we've just got to get some facts out and show people and let people decide for themselves. So let, let the people see what's being sent to us and just yeah. make their own decisions. I'm not forcing anybody to turn against anybody or to stir no. towards them. I just wanted these facts to come out so people mm. can see what we're up against and then it's up to them which what they want to believe, isn't it? It is, yeah. But I I, I initially liked him. I mean, I'm a per I'm, I'm a person. Mm -hmm. When I make a friend and they're a good friend, they're a friend for life and I'll do anything I can for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I class you as friends um, and I'll, I'll be there. I'll support you for whenever you want me. Oh. Um, but, um, you know, for, for him to do that, for that person to do that, what he's done, and to whip up hatred and get people, other people who don't know you, know. Um, to phone you and say what they have done, it's anybody else who crack it. And I really honestly think that you, you're so strong for putting up with it. Look. Oh, I really do. Well, that's one of the things that Dale was saying. He said, obviously, Simon, you're, you're a strong lad and you, 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 you're not shy of... of uh, like old fashioned uh, one to one or whatever it is, but like he said, you 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 were a, like a fighter. So and he he was like getting all this threats, like you were going to do this that and the other. And yeah. it's awful. It's just why would why would people do that? Do you know what I mean? It's I sort of explain my child. I don't I don't want to go into it in great detail, but. Um... I got accused of doing many things. I got accused of doing arse and allegedly doing arse, and um, I didn't do it. Um, I allegedly beat people up, um, uh, which, you know, I didn't do it. I did get done for a couple of things, you know, like um, uh, ABH, they wanted to do me for GBH, and then I had to admit ABH and stuff like that, and I, you know what I mean? But um, I soon realised, you know, it wasn't the way, and one day I just collapsed at home, 
and I prayed like I've never prayed before. And I said to God, and this is a, this is a gospel truth. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, make me a better person, number one, and get me a move back to my hometown. Within a year, I kid you not, my son was born and he's changed me forever. He's made me the father I am today. Uh, and he's changed me forever and I love him to bits. Yeah. And two, we got a move to my own, old hometown where I was born. Hello. The thing is what I asked him to do and he did it. Amazing. God, it's if, amazing. It, if you're asking, if people are asking him to do, oh, can I win the lottery? Lord, please. He's yeah. going to ignore you. He doesn't do that. That's not how it works. Yeah. If you ask him to make you a better person, yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Help me with my job and stuff like that. He'll be listening. He does listen, and I, I do believe it. Totally I do believe it. Believe it. I, and I, I'll tell you a little story about my father. After my father died from cancer, um, yeah. at the end he was riddled with it. Yeah. Uh, and he died in 2009. Mm -hmm. About 2012, uh, something woke me up. I heard a noise. And I looked to my right hand side, and my dad was stood there, just like he was when I was a child. He was young again. And he was just sat, sat, stood there looking at me, smirking. And I, I launched out initially because I thought it was somebody stood there. So I just launched a, a punch out and it just went straight through him and he just disappeared. But I saw him. So, you know, I do believe in uh, life after death. And I do believe that we carry on. I believe that heaven's a wonderful place. And oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be because, you know, the alternative is just scary. And I don't believe that, you know, we... we get damned i mean the lord's prayer it, it says something about on earth as it is in heaven so you know i've had friends who have committed suicide and i do believe that a lot of people believe that they get punished and they go to hell i believe that they get help because what i do I, what do we do here when we didn't you know mental health issues or we're depressed or we, we get help yeah. on earth as it is in heaven so we get help when we go there you know what i mean i do believe that and i believe that um Everybody, God gives everybody a chance, doesn't it? When you ask them to, but yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree, Sam. And he gives people free will, and that's yes. why we want to put these facts out. We don't want to bully anybody into believing what we're saying. We just no. blatant facts for you. All. What we've done today is um, it's ideal for you because it shows your side of the story. It proves what you've been saying. You're not attacking them in any way. You're just telling oh, your it. side of the story. No. And that's it, you know what I mean? And you can't do any more than that. People can make them up their own mind up. They can think I'm lying, I don't give a shit. I tell the truth and I'll tell people what I think of them, you know. And like I said to you before, um, I did watch the McIntyre and I didn't I didn't like the person that Brian was, but what the man what he's become is totally different and he's a lovely man. He is, and, you know, he is. Yeah. He is and, you're, and you're fantastic, you support him and, and it's brilliant. Oh, He's got a good you. family. There's Carol and his sister and the people like that. So it's fantastic. They're good people. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. Very good people, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I wasn't talking to Brian now. I'm talking to his sister. <laughs> it's all right. I'd love to. I can't wait to have a chat with Brian on the podcast one of the days because he'd be fantastic. Yeah, I love to... talking to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're going to get the truth out today. Yeah. Uh, but I'd love to chat to you both one day. Yeah, definitely. But he'll definitely do a podcast with you because we've decided we're not going to let Brian know about all of this because he's going through enough. Um, I think that's best for now because he, he you know, he's yeah, he's, he's, he's going going to go through. Like I say, he's going to go through enough, and it's going to be a long process for him, so he doesn't need the extra work. Yeah, I just felt like he's not here to to actually say anything. So I just felt like. People can, if they get facts out, truths out, and screenshots, yeah. which can't be denied, people can make their own mind up. I don't want yeah. to encourage anybody to call these people or to yeah. call them or whatever. All I want them to do is mm. just see for themselves. Um, exactly. exactly, yeah. yeah. And when he comes out, you know, I just wish him uh, a quick recovery. Yeah. And I know he's got an inner line in him. He's a very strong man. Yeah, he is. Uh, strong world, and he will get back, and he will be back. He will be back. Watch his face. He will be back. Brilliant. <laughs> Aaron, thank you very much. You're welcome, sweetheart. I've enjoyed it. It's gone, gone quick, hasn't it, really? Yeah, I don't know how long's it been. Oh, it's gone ages. Like I said to you earlier on, I was going to do it naked, but I didn't want to scare you. <laughs> <the view. laughs> so I've got too fat belly for that. So. Oh, man. And <laughs> your book links are going to be underneath this video for, for um, thank you, Dan. Dad's 
book that he did. The, and every penny goes to the NSPC child lines. I'll, I'll put, I'll put uh, if you can put the proof up that I've been yeah, paying donations. I mean, the, the, the last payment I give them, I only got £2.75. It doesn't make much the book. Um, so I round it up and I give them a five, you know what I mean? And that's what yeah. I do. Yes. So the, fantastic. it's an interesting subject about all the miners' things. Yes. Mm. So the yeah. book will be, link will be under here. And remember, it's all going to child line, so it's going to help people, their children. And that's Can I just say as well, um, after we fell out, I mysteriously got a couple of negative reviews on my dad's book. Now, my dad's book, um, it's quite a good book. I mean, I'm, I'm biased, so I will say it, but it's quite a good book. But we got quite a few negative reviews. Well, Every penny's going to child line, so what they're doing is they're only affecting child line at NSPCC. That's what they're doing. Yeah, they do. That's what they're doing, and it's disgusting. Mm. But um, what me and Neil did one day, we, um, we were getting the same negative reviews. Yeah. And it was by the same people's name. It'd be, um, yeah. and just play or, or a, a, a slight variation of the name. Yeah. We won't say it, but it's a slight variation. You know what I mean? It might have the first name um, as the last name and stuff like that, but you know, you know who it is. Yeah. I think the main ones were all on Amazon and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, like we said, we don't want these people to, we don't want to cause any upset for these people. We don't want to cause any people to give them any. Nope. I've never gone on Amazon and left them any negative feedback. I wouldn't do because it's no. something I wouldn't do. No. Uh, up, up till now, I've not um, attacked them or sent them anything. You know, they sent me nasty emails today, uh, messages through Facebook, which I've just yeah, I've saved and then deleted. And if the police um, come, I will show them that and I will show them the proof. Was that under their own account, Simon? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. right. well, you're all right then, because obviously if the police do come, you can show them that, can't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. And I will show them the proof again of him, uh, that certain person uh, threatening to burn your house down, no. getting somebody to threaten to burn your house down, which is a serious crime. And that, that, in my opinion, needs to be investigated because it's wrong. Yeah, it caused, it caused a lot of uh, anxiety to come back with it me. It will do. I mean, Brian will be frustrated because he's not 100% yet. So, you know, he can't do anything. And, and I know he's wanting to do the legal way. He's, he's a changed man and he's with Jesus now, which is good. He's with God. He is, he's totally changed, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I said before, he's a lovely man. I, I can't... Um, it feels like I'm bigging him up, and, and but it really, you know, you both are. You're fantastic people, and I love you to be. Oh, and we love you too. Thank you for that, Darren. Yeah, so thank you, Sam, for coming on. But we're going to have to go to the bath and take him some... Uh, I'd make him some chicken tonight, some, so I'm going to take him to the ward dog, because he won't let us oh, in. Yeah. I don't know whether the restrictions might get lifted tomorrow, he was saying. So, All right, brilliant. Well, let, let him know that we've done a podcast and uh, give him my best wishes for you. Art. Yeah, I will. I'll take a little video. I'll make him do a little video for you. I'll take that. Brilliant, video. brilliant. That'd be fantastic. I love that. All right, then, Simon. Thank you so much. Yeah. Don't forget, click on Simon's book link below because it's all for charity. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Rita. You'll take care, love. See you later, Pat.